One of the spookiest things facing the airline industry today, what is known as flight shaming. It's the guilt people feel about elevated levels of carbon emissions associated with air travel. And as the airlines face the task of paying a, a new carbon offsetting cost, which fund project, projects to reduce greenhouse gases, one Wall Street firm says shareholders could pay the price. City estimates it will cost $3.8 billion a year by 2025 to offset carbon emissions for all global economy flights, but warns the actual cost could be up to 10 times higher. Joining us now is the analyst behind the numbers, City Managing Director Mark Manduka. Mark, great to have you with us. Hey, thank you. Um, this is really a thing. I mean, Tyler was saying that he hadn't heard of it till this morning. I have heard of it, but I didn't think that this was something that would you know, spark a, a research report from a major investment bank. It's funny. I mean, we, we approached it with the same skepticism that, that, that you've just mentioned. And I think you described the theme beautifully. The fact is there are three things to be concerned about here. This is going to affect three rungs of society. First of all, you're going to get the consumer hit. You're going to get the corporate hit. And then you're going to get the government reaction. And all in all, it's going to affect 44% of global airline profits by 2025, in our view. Have the airlines, though, in terms of the stock prices, have, have they factored that cost in? It's funny you say that, because the, the global airline space hasn't really considered this um, to the degree that I think that, that will be hitting them in the subsequent years. Yes, they all talk about being carbon neutral. But when you actually look at the number of consumers and corporates that are actually carbon offsetting, you actually find that the numbers are surprisingly small. It's 1% of global consumers are actually carbon offsetting their flights at the moment. So this is a theme that is still in its nascency, and it's something that I think we're going to get a significant amount of traction on over the next five years. Is I think this, to be clear, it's going to be a theme that affects Europe first and foremost. Is this a carbon offset coming from somewhere? In other words, is are airlines going to be um, forced to respond to either governmental or UN uh, guidelines that they must then follow to offset the carbon that, that issues from their engines? Well, I, I don't see how, what, what, what's, who's going to enforce this, in other words? It's funny you say that. So just to, just to be clear, you, you're referring there in terms of the Corsia program, which is, which is gaining traction in the, into the next decade. We've already had our own program here in Europe, uh, the ETS offset program, which is really an intra-European phenomenon. The Corsia program that you're relating to will, will ultimately take effect really into the next decade. In terms of enforcement, it's going to be very difficult because ultimately different airlines have different programs in terms of the way they want to offset. Some people don't have programs. Other people use uh, different forms of, of tree programs. Other people use solar programs to try and offset effectively their carbon. But there's no uniform pattern here, and that's really the problem. That dislocation is going to cause confusion, I think. So I agree with your point. Mark, you've said this could reduce global profits by 44 percent by 2025. That's a huge hit if the airlines were to absorb all the costs. How much do you think they'll absorb, and how much will they pass along as price hikes for travelers? That's a great question. So I guess in, in, in any analysis, you're always looking at sort of insulated pods. To do the analysis, what we looked at was what happens if the airlines eat the majority of the costs. The problem is, is that this is an industry that over the past 30 years has not been good at passing on effectively price to the consumer. Prices have been in deflation since the 1980s in this sector. And therefore, just to assume that this can just be passed on to the sector mm -hmm. or rather to the consumer is the wrong assumption, I think. So I think the majority here will ultimately be eaten by the airlines in effectively what is a, a commodity sector. The governments will also want their slice of the pie. So tax receipts on this will ultimately be a focus area for some governments. Are We've seen it already with APD. I expect more of that to come. Are there not enough ways to offset carbon uh, for the airlines to not eat so much of that cost themselves? In other words, are there enough emissions credits, for instance, for uh, Lufthansa to buy in, in order to, to save themselves some money? It's very difficult. If you, if you know, your, you know your typical tree um, effectively only offsets 50 kilos of carbon per year. You know, so to, to actually offset the global carbon, you're going to have a big problem in terms of finding almost enough acreage to do this. So 
it's, it's very good talking about the theory, but actually putting this into effect and having safety checks to make sure that this actually gets done and we offset the right amount of carbon is going to be difficult. And then there's going to be the consumer backlash as well. This is an expensive exercise, and I think it's going to have an effect on volumes. Just to put it into context, a 1% increase in price typically offsets volumes in this sector by 0.65%. So you have huge price elasticity and, as I said, a commodity sector. And just quickly, Mark, uh, you know, you cover mostly the, the European airlines, but uh, U.S. airlines that fly into Europe, they also have to be part of this? I think the U.S. airlines have, have arguably been slower at adoption. Mm -hmm. um, there are many reasons for that. But what I would point towards is the fact that there are other forms of transportation uh, that compete directly with airlines in Europe. That mm -hmm. isn't the same case in the US. You guys don't have the same high-speed rail network, for example, that, say, the European market does. And therefore, I think it's going to take longer for the US to catch on. But, but I think that the one fact is true here, and that is all corporates are going to want to say that they are carbon neutral over the next 25 right. years. It will be a stamp of approval. And that, I think, will therefore gain traction and mm -hmm. will be much to the deficit and problem for the airlines.